here without spooking deer and get everything set up. I was able to use my climber and I don't think I spooked any deer. So I'm not too worried about that. But anyway, it's the afternoon hunt of November 21st and we're set up now in the creek thicket. I don't have a great feeling about this sit because I got in here to where I was gonna set up. We're, we're right on the edge of this creek thicket public land to my left here about, I don't know, 15 yards. And then I'm actually on the creek thicket private. It's just a little five acre piece of private land that borders it that I have permission to hunt. And uh, we're set up here in basically a funnel, but it also has bedding to the it'd be the east and the west. So it's uh, it's a funnel within 100 yards of bedding on both sides. So it's traditionally been a really good spot for deer movement, and we've seen some good bucks out of it. Trevor actually killed his his buck this year out of a tree somewhere close in here. I wasn't with him that day, but in this spot, in this within 20 yards of this tree, I bet. And the buck was standing right there behind me. So that was a mature buck. We think he was probably four and a half years old. And it's been a good spot in the past, but I think there's a, there's a tree stand set up now on the creek, on the public land, and I'm pretty sure it's new. So that's never a good thing. <laughs> It's never what you hope to find when you go into one of your spots, but you know it's public land, and, and he has just as much right to be there as I have right to be here. So nothing you can do about it. I thought about moving, but got in here kind of late. It's already about 3:15, and didn't want to mess with it at that point. So anyway, it's super cold. We have strong northwest winds, so I'm hoping that has these deer up on their feet. I know there's still several shooters in here, so anything could happen. that 10 point Trevor almost Trevor almost killed him on Halloween weekend had him at 20 yards and then he was sneaking up on him and he ended up spooking I think I just had him coming in on a string I looked up I just saw tines coming up through the, through the woods he was coming right at me and this, this setup is just dumb Got the camera arm on my left side, I'm self-filming. My bow's behind the tree because it's hanging on a limb. It's just stupid. I don't know why, but I couldn't put the camera on the right side. So I was like, okay, fine, I'm not going to be able to really get this on film. He was moving, he was cruising. He was cruising right on the north side of this creek like they do a lot of times on these north winds. He's just cruising, checking for the last does that are in heat. I knew they'd be doing that. I should have set up right on the creek. 
somebody is coming right in. I was like, fine, I, I'm not gonna get it totally on camera, but it'll be wide angle, you'll be able to see him, it'll be, it'll be good enough. I'm like, I've been hunting hard this year, screw it. So finally I get my bow behind the tree, camera's pointed in that direction. And he's at high range of me, at 33 yards, about to come into my opening. And I, 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 I just blew it. <laughs> I was, he was moving so fast, I just reached down and I was gonna start drawing. And I think he caught my hand moving and didn't pick the best tree from that angle. He could have just silhouetted me so easily. Standing up on this tree, I have no cover this direction, so he saw me. Man, that's not the biggest deer ever. Not my biggest, but that's disappointing. I've put in so many hours hunting this year, and I haven't I haven't even drawn my bow on anything. But that would have been a nice deer to Fill my tag after hunting this long, but nothing you can do now except learn from it. It is it's awesome to see a deer like that that you want to shoot. You know, like I said, not the biggest, but I've definitely have been happy. So, pretty cool, and I'm glad. wrapped buck on the same trail these bucks are cruising this north side of this creek I'm glad I came in here and I'm glad this plan is working out Well guys, just got back into the car. Didn't end up seeing anything else after that little half rack, year and a half old cruise through. So I guess it was just those two up on their feet cruising. But can't really ask for anything better than that to have one of your shooters come into 30 yards. Um, it's just a game of inches bow hunting is. And after thinking about that, of course, I'm gonna be kicking myself for this missed opportunity for a long time, I bet. but. As I was sitting there thinking about what all went wrong and what I could do different and trying to learn from it, I actually think he probably winded me. Um, I set up off of the creek edge. I knew they, they could be cruising that creek edge, but there were also trails all throughout that little pinch point. So I wanted to set up more towards the middle of it, um, not right on the edge. And I thought I could get away with it, even though it was a north wind. I thought, well, uh, anything can be cruising that creek bed, and I'll be up in a tree. The wind was blowing so hard that I thought, well, it'll just go right over them, and, and I'll be fine. So I thought that was the way to go for tonight. And I remember right before I looked up and saw them, the wind died down. for It was only died down for like five minutes. And I was like, oh, good, finally. Maybe the deer will get up on their feet and move. Well, I think that's probably what ended up doing me in, and that's the reason he was able to win me. Because when that wind's really howling and, and blowing hard, um, I could tell from, you know, stuff in the air that it was just going, it was just staying up in the air and going right over where any of those deer would have been. But it kind of died down when he was up on his feet cruising. When he was at 30 yards, um, you know, another problem was he came in so fast. By the time I had my bow in my hand, reached around the tree, grabbed it, had the camera arm set up, and 
had my glove off to be able to shoot, he was at 30 yards, and I then I had to range it to figure out how far he was, and I think as I was ranging it, he caught my wind because he stopped. If I'd had more time, I'd have been ready, and he was actually, I mean, I probably could have shot him where he ended up stopping uh, where he winded me, and I would have been able to get a good shot off. He would have been stopped clean, and, and I don't think he would have heard my bow in the wind. I don't think he would have jumped the string or anything. So that probably would have worked out fine, but he just came in so fast I wasn't ready. And then by the time I got it ranged, he had me winded, I think. And, you know, then he was looking for something and saw my silhouette in the tree with, with nothing behind me. And it was probably pretty easy to see me. And I couldn't get it all the way up the tree because there was a split in it. And the climber didn't allow me to go as high as I would have liked to. So probably pretty easy to see me. And, you know, just something to learn from. A lot of things went wrong in that setup, I guess. But... You know, I was in the right area, just the setup wasn't the best. And I should have known better. Should have been set up right along that creek, I think. And then I might have gotten him. But oh well, if he lives through this year, he'll be even bigger next year. We think that deer's a three and a half year old, so he'll be really big next year if he lives through this year. And it's good to see that he's still around after most of the pressures come through. Um, the rut's basically over, so the hunting pressure is just going to keep going downhill. Well, I should put it differently. It's going to go downhill, and then it's going to be shotgun season, and then it's going to spike way up, and then it's going to be basically nothing, So, in my experience. So, good and bad, but I, I'm thinking he might make it through the year um, in this area, and I actually think we have a pretty good shot of, of getting on him again. He was definitely bedded in the bedding area to the east of that setup um, on that private land a little bit more and I know that bedding area pretty well it's pretty easy to set up on that on that bedding area and I think well he's definitely boogered bad enough that we might not be able to see him out of that pinch point again but I'm thinking he'll go back and use that bedding area um, and not too long because as soon as as soon as he spooked, he went back into that bedding area. So that tells you he probably feels pretty safe in there. Um, so we might be able to set up in there pretty soon and get a crack at him in there or one of the other bedding areas on that property. But um, pretty excited to see he's still alive, and I think that's the deer that we, we have a chance of getting back on. So anyway, tomorrow morning we're going to be going pheasant hunting, and then... Uh, I'll be back out deer hunting tomorrow afternoon, I bet. So, if you like the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to see future content. Thanks.